Hi guys, welcome to Tech TBA. Here's our first video on Oracle about Oracle Database Flashback internals. We are also going to discuss about exciting features on Flashback in 19 c Before we start, let's flashback our thoughts to recollect conversation between Steve and Sarah. Here are the outstanding questions. What is the content of the flashback logs versus the archive read log files? If the content is same, why does Oracle keeps a duplicate copy of data? If the content is different, where does the flashback data is from? Is the undo data carried over to flashback logs? If so, why do we need to preserve the archive log files for the flashback operations? Finally, the new features of 19C on the flashback. Here is a quick intro about the flashback. Flashback database feature introduced in 10.1 used to, to flashback the database to point in time in the past. Flashback creates the flashback logs to write the flashback data which is stored at recovery file destination RFRA and managed by recovery file destination size parameter. Recovery writer is the background process which writes the flashback data. The parameter db flashback retention target specifies the upper limit on how far back in time the database can be flashback. We have two types of restore points, namely normal and guaranteed restore point. If we choose the guaranteed restore point, then the flashback logs and the archive logs are retained until the GRP is dropped. That guarantees the database flashback up until the SCN of restore point. Let's get back to the Oracle architecture. Whenever there is a transaction on the database, the transaction gets updated on the read log buffer which gets written to the read log files by log writer process. The value of the transaction is kept at the undo segments on the undo table space. Let's look at the content of the read log first. As per Oracle document, the read log files are filled with read record. A read record is also called as a read entry. It's made up of a group of change vectors, each of which is a description of a change made to a single block in the database. The redo entries record data that you can use to reconstruct all the changes made to the database, including the undo segments. Therefore, the redo log also protects the rollback data. When you recover the database using the redo data, the database reads the change vectors in the redo records and applies the changes in the relevant blocks to make it until the SCN. It's perceived that the redo log consists of all the changes done at the block level along with undo segments. But the past image of the block is not recorded anywhere and that's exactly the content of the flashback logs. Say you are updating a salary of an employee from 10,000 to 20,000. The content of redo is the change vectors to update the salary from 10,000 to 20,000. The content of undo segment is the previous value which is 10,000. The previous image of the block when the salary was 10,000 goes to the flashback data. So when we flashback the database using the flashback logs, the previous block image from the flashback data restored from the flashback logs which makes the salary as 10,000. So the flashback is different from traditional undo rollback operation. But how does the undo data and the flashback data are different? Undo data used for transaction rollback and flashback data used for block level rollback. Due to the same reason, undo rollback is not possible for DDL operations. But flashback can roll back even the DDL operations. So if the flashback and undo are different, how does the recovery writer get the pre-image of the block? This is from a memory component called flashback buffer, which is part of SCA, which gets allocated when we enable the flashback database. The flush mechanism of recovery writer is similar to log writer process. The log writer writes redo changes to the redo logs. Recovery writer writes flashback buffer into the flashback logs. Here comes the question of why do we need to retain the archive log files for the flashback operation? This is because the recovery writer process writes the flashback logs asynchronously and it is not written for every change. Whereas log writer process writes the data onto the redo log files synchronously and every change is being recorded. Consider our flashback objective is at 10 am. Then the flashback log last write time may be at 9.47 am. But the redo log file 
will have the read data until 10 am to perform the flashback operation oracle apply the flashback log which will restore all the blocks until 9:47 am then oracle applies the read log to roll forward the change from 9:47 am till 10 am now let's look at the new features of 19c on the flashback in a data guard environment if we flashback the primary database we will have to flashback or rebuild the standby database in oracle 19c we just need to make standby database in mount mode with no managed recovery or read only and then flashback the primary database when you restart your mrp after closing the physical standby the recovery process automatically flashback the standby database and continues to apply the new branch of redo so no worry about standby another feature is to purge the flashback logs from fra primary objective of fra is to keep the backup files until it reach the threshold of the allocated size but as the flashback logs have no limitation on fra many a times the flashback logs beyond the retention dumping fra causing the archive or the hard backup files to get purged starting oracle 19c oracle monitors the flashback logs in the fra and automatically deletes the flashback logs that are beyond the retention period so we don't need to turn off or turn on the flashback to purge the flashback logs on fra thanks for watching if you like this video press like button and share with your friends also subscribe to tech tba if you have any specific tba topic to talk about please update in comments